New Apple AI features have leaked and OpenAI may be done for. Welcome to the All Future Podcast. We talk about tech coming in the future. Thanks everyone who's been subscribing. I, I am constantly shocked when I look and see the subscriber numbers. I'm like, yeah. oh, cool. Like, like I, I keep putting these goals and they're too low. So we blew, blew past 2000 uh, and keep growing. So appreciate everyone uh, who's been subscribing and watching the videos. And yes. today we have all three of us on deck, full Voltron, the whole team together, including Woo. Andrew here, talking Hello. about probably our favorite topic to talk about, Apple being behind in AI. Oh, wait, no, they're not. They actually just beat everyone. Andrew, what's going on with this? <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. I, I like these announcements because you get to be so undervalued for so long and people are like, they'll never make it back. And these tech companies, you know, get in these dark places that people, and it's like, no, we're just waiting for the press release to come out. Mm -hmm. And so now we have leaked that Apple does have an LLM that you're, they're using. It goes by the name of Realm? How do you guys pronounce it? I don't actually know. It, it's Realm? Always, it spells the word Realm, which is another example of acronyms nested within acronyms, I think, yeah. right? All so, of these are so complicated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can tell it's, it's engineers, not marketing people coming up Reference with Reference resolution, which, how is that the E? I Reference think he, resolution as language modeling. That's what it stands for. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, it supposedly has already beat uh, GPT-4. We don't know on what metrics, we haven't had a release like Claude has these sort of like specified things that it asks questions in. And it'll be like math and then English. And it's almost like giving it an SAT test. And that's how they sort of grade these things. We don't know exactly how it's beat GPT-4 yet, but they say it has. And uh, they've also added a feature that is an image generation and animation feature, which we think they will add to the Photos app. So how do you think they're going to integrate this? Well, the first thing I think is going to first be most obviously seen in Siri. Obviously. Um, it seems like it can convert it to text that makes it a lot easier to run. And they said the small version of this realm could already, I think, perform similarly to chat GPT-4, which makes it more suitable to be on device because it requires less. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be on device like at launch in iOS 18 or anything, but it could be on device and then they were able to outperform gpt4 reportedly when they increased parameters there's a lot of things that i don't actually fully understand what's going on <laughs> magic but, it just works better yeah, yeah it's very interesting but the series stuff is pretty obvious it's i think and definitely obvious, really right? cool yeah. that we're going to be able to get that matching this with siri we've talked about this many many times the limitations of siri and it's mostly comes to Siri's ability to understand context, right? And that's something large language models are so much better at. So what I mean by that is that you get a result from an AI and you can say something along the lines of, I don't like that, make it more like this. Mm -hmm. You literally using those words, you know, not using proper nouns. For an AI to understand what is that, what is this? What do you mean by you don't like that part of it, right? There's all these like things it has to figure out and build. And currently, most of these AI models, when you're talking about, let's say you're on a website, Right, and you're like, hey, call this business. Mm -hmm. So the AI needs to look at a website, figure out what the business is, figure out how what's the number is to call it, right? And that means looking at both text, images, all this kind of stuff to figure out the context. What Realm does uh, is evidently, it, the first step is that it converts everything into text. So instead of uh, the AI having to look at the image, figure out what the image is to get that context, it's getting a text string describing things mm -hmm. and then can break it up from there and that's where this magic is happening. Something that, I'm gonna be honest, I thought this was already how this stuff was working, right? I yeah. was like, how else does it work? But there's more steps involved now in terms of it like is actually looking at an image and trying to parse image information instead of just looking at textual information. And that's what's making this thing better. And in theory, it can work way faster as well. There's the first, the step you say, call this business. And it says, what is this business? Yeah. You know, that's what it would do right now, <laughs> yeah. essentially. Because it, it's like, I have no context. Yeah. But then two, it could automatically like be doing this because you're just browsing on the website. Right. And it's already analyzing it so that you say, call this business. And it's bam. Right. It has already converted it. everything into text that mm -hmm. is within its sensory range, whatever yeah. that is, whether it's real life through a camera system or through a digital image or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another example I saw is that it could be around, uh, be aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. So it said could be aware of music that's playing in the background. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, well, we already have that with Shazam. But I think this is, again, the kind of thing where it would just already be aware right. it is what's already, happening. It has already converted 
whatever that song is mm-hmm. into the text of what that song is and the name yeah. and all this kind of stuff instead of having to do it on the fly and do mm-hmm. all this like processing. So you thing. ask it and it's just yeah. immediate. Interesting. So you guys are saying the big difference between this is it's always running in the ba- in the background and always has this information at the ready, ready to give it to you. It is constantly converting its world into text. Yes, and yeah. that's that's how it works so well. Is that it is already in a language that computers understand better. Another thing this said it could bring is just remembering conversation history with Siri, which allows yeah. all this yeah. stuff. That I mean, we're this already. About. I mean, this is. I mean, if anyone who uses chat GPT or any large mm-hmm. language model, this is the best part of it, Yeah. right? Is that you can continually talk to it and refine what it's telling you or ask it amplifying information, all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. This absolutely needs to be on Siri. This, this is what makes Siri turn into Star Trek level stuff, yeah. you know, instead of a voice command system, which what it is now. So that's all Siri stuff. But on the photos side, there's a lot more integration we could see. Do you want to talk about that, Andrew? Yeah, sure. Uh, so... We are getting image animation. That's the term they've used for us. So we don't know exactly what that means, but we've seen it used in a lot of other contexts. So you can't open your phone without seeing some kind of ad for an app that does image animation right now, which is taking an image, making you dance. I don't think this is like exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Taking Make an you dance. image. That's what I'm going to do with every image. Changing, <laughs> changing your facial expression, changing other people's facial expressions, but actually being able to take and manipulate an image have you you guys have heard people get into these arguments about like what is a picture yeah which is super annoying because you mean me on this podcast i don't i I don't like this people don't care and i think you've mentioned this too and it's probably in the back of my mind because i've watched you say it but it's like people care about the memory that they had they don't care like is this picture real life or not or is this exactly how it happened if you had a nice picture of your child like in front of this bridge that you went on vacation for and he's crying but you would have rather have been smiling you know and then uh, hopefully you'd have the raw data there to go like here's how it really looked but you know here's the ones you can send to your family Mm -hmm. i i think we would really appreciate that in photos what are you guys waiting for with this photos app well i don't know if it's what i'm waiting for necessarily but the exact thing you're talking about is going to sell more phones right mm-hmm. and that's what this really comes down to what's going to sell more phones and to kind of you know expand a little bit of what you're talking about there right is the average person taking a picture to capture reality or capture a memory which is very very different things and you know use the example of the kid crying or whatever that kid could have been happy the entire rest of the day and th- that happens to be when we took that picture something was wrong right mm-hmm. so it's like oh like we're not capturing the real memory of it. You know, we, we can throw off all these platitudes with the Picasso quote, art's a lie that tells the truth, right? Like, so like that's that's what this thing is trying to do, right? Like it's, it's altering reality, but in some ways is a better version of reality or a more accurate version of reality, mm-hmm. um, which is, I know, a weird dystopian double speak 1984 thing. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but I think people are actually gonna like this kind of technology. The other piece of this, which I think is cool, is not just its ability to do this, but its ability to do this through a large language model that you can naturally talk to it, right? We can already do this, right? People with Photoshop have been able to do this for years, but now you're gonna be able to tell your phone, hey, can you make my daughter smile? And it mm-hmm. goes, okay, <laughs> and just does it, right? Like, yeah. like that's, what's, that's the big difference. And I think why some people are kind of scared of this tech is that all of a sudden there is zero barrier to entry with it. You can make this, I mean, I've been making this argument about what was reality there and what if the memory is the opposite of that, right? Mm-hmm. What if the picture is capturing, like that a person was sad or angry about a situation that whole day. They were with their ex who's abusing them. And they were not smiling that and, day. Yeah. And then they're only posting pictures on social media, you know, other people around or whatever, that person's always smiling now, mm-hmm. right? So it gives you a warped sense of reality in that case. Yeah. So a lot of weird things here, but I think the bottom line, Apple's going to have to have these features to compete because uh, on the other side of the house, this is already on Android phones. I saw an interesting thing. So this is called like an MGIE model. And it's another acronym, MLLM Guided Image Editing. And so you can use plain language to do things like crop, resize, mm-hmm. flip, and add filters through text prompts, mm-hmm. which I'm assuming would then you could just add the Siri layer on top of that. But even that, it's, it seems super basic. But certain things I'm thinking of is like, resizing a photo how many times do you see a resized photo that's just crunched the wrong way for some reason so and you can just say resize this for instagram resize this for a reel Mm -hmm. resize this for whatever and it does it automatically stuff that seems really basic that i think people like us we're like we kind of know those aspect ratios and Mm -hmm. how to do it right but it's actually kind of helpful even though it's not the fancy stuff and i'm sure we'll see that stuff probably first 
Yeah, absolutely. And then ultimately, this will do what all these things do is that people will lose jobs because uh, yeah. who needs an image editor or a photographer or anything when I can just talk to an AI? Mm -hmm. And then we'll see how good this actually works or not. Like right now, we already have all these things. So the barrier to entry is just your time and figuring out how to use something like this. Whereas, okay, you could type it into an LLM, but now you're going to be so lazy that you're not even going to learn the prompts or look up the prompts that it takes to get a good photo out of them. It's the same thing that's going to happen. And we talk about this a lot too, where it's like really what is in the eye of the artist in the back of their mind? Like what do they want to see on the back end? If you could just type into something and get some kind of result, but it's still bad and you're still not going to get some kind of finished product that resonates. And if this brings the whole level of, photos like up to a different you know level then artists the real artists are going to get better at their craft as they always have and use these tools to create better images for the people who can afford the artists and then there's going to be this new middle class of people who actually took the time to learn the prompts to actually get the result they want and then if you're not using this at all well you're going to be very left behind in this new mm -hmm. normal of how good images are going to look mm -hmm. or you'll be that standout you know like John Williams still, I think, does stuff by hand. And he, you know, he's the standout compared to the rest of the industry right now. This but. is already happening uh, in uh, the book and publishing world for illustration work. Hmm. And that the people who are getting jobs now are the people with more, what I would call naturalistic styles or kind of messy styles, sketchy yeah. pen and ink work, right? Like anyone who's doing these like really well modeled stuff, everyone's like, Looks like AI. I'm out, right? So it's mm -hmm. like, so like that's gonna the, the split that's gonna happen. Of course, AI can also make that scratchy looking stuff. Just most people aren't smart enough to give the prompts to, to tell mm -hmm. to do that, right? Yeah, and, and if we're seeing these sorts of things already happen with Apple, there's a lot of new startups that they could be buying already if they, you know, haven't looked into these sorts of things before. So there is a new startup called Hume. And it is an emotional, intelligent AI, and it's incredible. I was listening to demos of it and what they were explaining. It is super cool. You get this sort of grid of human emotion, that how they've sort of mapped it between angry and calm. Mm -hmm. And as you're speaking to an LLM, it puts on that grid where it thinks you're at, and then it responds to you appropriately. So if you're saying something sarcastically or like a joke, yeah. it'll respond back with like a quirky joke. If you're saying something in a sad tone, it might respond in a caring tone. And it has to like decide how to speak to you. And I think past these large language models being able to speak to you, they have to speak to you in a way that is appropriate for a human to speak to you. Yeah. So that is the next step on all these things. Will it get the update in iOS 18? I don't know, but this is definitely coming for all large language models. Yeah. yeah. A funny thing I think of there is like uh, with Siri or any of these assistants, I think we've all had an experience where it's doing something at the worst possible time wrong and we angrily say, stop, mm -hmm. you know, and <laughs> it could pick up on that and be like, oh, maybe I... Maybe I messed this up. Mm -hmm. How do how did I do this wrong, and how can I fix this well, in the future? But what actually happens with that, and I am undoubtedly going to trigger a Siri right now, so uh, yeah. get ready here. People will say something that sounds like the word Siri. Then Siri will pick it up and start playing a song or doing whatever, and then someone will immediately turn to it and go, stop, and then they go, oh, flustered, and they'll go, hey, Siri, stop. You know, like, mm -hmm. so it's like this, like, so it's, it's again, it goes back to that context kind of thing. There, there it is. is. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> so it goes back to that context thing. So if like if Siri hears you angrily say stop, it can all of a sudden assume it's screwed up mm -hmm. and just like not do whatever it's doing, right? Yeah. <laughs> or figure out what it did wrong for next time. You yeah, know? yeah. It's like, oh, they got really mad about that. Yeah. Uh, like why was this so inappropriate that, at this time? That's an interesting thing mm -hmm. that I thought of. But what other use cases do you guys see? I, I so I heard more of like the demo and the guy explained the thing. So one of the super interesting pieces was they have to test it on different languages and every different language puts the emotional map in a different place of what they use. Mm. And like even, Germans are like angry all the time. Even and... <laughs> something like a Southern accent versus a New York accent mm -hmm. or something like that. Like there's lots of unwritten rules to their communication that we might not know. This could be a great sort of translator let's say for unwritten rules of communication so if this sort mm. of knows how to speak to a new yorker and you're from the south and you talk slow or whatever those sorts of things are 
you know, you could really start to translate into each other's language without trying very hard, even speaking English, you know? Yeah. That's mm-hmm. mm-hmm. also like a generational thing, I think. You see it a lot in text. I've seen a lot of funny memes about that where it's like a millennial typing something and they just have a period at the end. Mm -hmm. So then Gen Z is like, oh my gosh, they're furious at me. Mm -hmm. They just ended it with a period. They didn't say ha ha. They didn't say lol. Yeah, I I text in proper grammar a lot and like Uh I get that all the time. People are like, oh, what's wrong? And I'm like, "Uh, nothing. I literally just answered your question. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So it could help with that kind of thing. Yeah. As AIs get kind of smarter and have more personality, for lack of a better term, it knowing time and place for things, right? Mm -hmm. Like Siri now has all these damn jokes in it right every stupid ai assistant has these jokes built in that are designed when it says a certain thing right like if you if you curse at siri it'll go well that's not nice you know whatever it'll Mm -hmm. do these things so like it can read the room right that's really it's gonna it's really it all comes back to that context thing right like understanding what's actually going on how i should react as an ai should i be sounding more professional should be acting crazy and really it all goes back to that uh scene in interstellar where yeah. matthew mcconaughey tells the robot that. to calm down right Tars, yeah. and then the, yeah and then Tars is like okay now i will talk like a robot because we're in a life and death situation right mm-hmm. so yeah so this is cool stuff and again gotta be in siri gotta be in siri if apple wants to keep up with all these things apple needs all these things to stay competitive definitely so one of the just dystopian things, because I always have to throw in my dystopian pieces, <laughs> is as things get more emotionally intelligent, they're going to become more persuasive. And so these things will definitely be sent to attack us in the sales world and sent to attack us in the extension of the sales world politics. So do you guys have opinions of those sorts of things like riling up you know, uh, an already charged uh, political voter to do stupid things absolutely right anytime and this is you know lizard brain human stuff like we anthropomorphize stuff right like we we give things that are not human human like characteristics Mm -hmm. and this is going to have a ton of human characteristics already except not being human and not having a soul and possibly being run by a nefarious organization right yeah so this is going to be a scam machine Mm mm-hmm We've already seen that with social media to a degree, a a large degree, where it just has a goal in mind Mm -hmm. and it doesn't care about what's happening. And so, yeah, you add that and then they also have the just better manipulation tactics to a degree. Yeah, that's it's it's the scene in Terminator where he like calls (laughs) as the boy. Right. And he's like, mommy, what's wrong? You know, and it's like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger talking. Yeah, that's going to happen. Just across the board, across the board. I think we do, we talked about this in some of the other uh, more legal issues, but we have to make it illegal for an AI chatbot to call you without announcing itself as an AI chatbot. That needs to be in law tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. When we saw it happen, I mean, Joe Biden did all these robocalls. Joe Biden, AI, Joe Biden did all Mm -hmm. these robocalls. And we know that OpenAI has a voice cloning software that evidently can clone voices almost instantly 15 seconds there's 15 seconds 15 seconds and it can copy your voice you add this emotional thing from hume on here game over right like like there's no way my elderly parents will not know it's me if it's my voice calling crying saying please wire a million dollars to an island in the caymans everyone get your safe word with your old parents you almost need that right you almost need like these kind of passwords right it's crazy it's crazy I think we got a little off the rails there talking about the doom of it, but you know, Apple's going to need all these things. Apple Mm -hmm. needs to have these kind of features to stay competitive. And it's just going to be in the hands of people, whether they do bad or good stuff with it. Right. I am excited to upgrade. It's been the first time in a long time. I've actually looked at a phone and not just gone, Oh, it's a better camera or Mm -hmm. I'll use this thing. And then I never use it. Like these things are going to get used every single day. I'm absolutely going to use every single thing. I just talked bad about. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. And it's, Hopefully some of this or a lot of this is coming in iOS 18 later this year.